I'm Matt Kritz, the Senior Associate Athletic Director for Athletic Performance and uh, Scholar Athlete Wellness here at UC San Diego. So I oversee the Athletic Performance Unit here at UC San Diego. Uh, that unit comprises strength and conditioning, sports medicine, sports nutrition, sports psychology, and sport analytics. Those five disciplines drive the holistic approach uh, that we use here to develop our scholar athletes. So this is our main athletic training facility here at UC San Diego. It's the home of the athletic performance unit. Uh, it's where we develop our athletes, uh, make them fitter, faster, stronger uh, for the demands that they face in training and competition. This facility is, is fantastic because it enables us to uh, train all of our scholar athletes here. It's not uh, for any one team, it's for all teams. It's a great environment because all teams uh, uh, help raise the collective uh, high performance training attitude that we uh, really try to promote here. And it enables us to develop our athletes in a real progressive uh, manner. And this facility helps us achieve that. There's lots of equipment here that uh, enables us to load them, uh, but we, how we load them uh, is really our point of difference. We're, we're trying to maximize their time in their sport and minimize the time out of the sport due to injuries and we do that with the holistic approach uh, across all the disciplines that I mentioned. We have uh, our ethos here, uh, one athlete, one program approach. Uh, so there isn't this strength, uh, strength and conditioning creates a program, sports medicine creates a program. They create a program together based on the needs of that athlete uh, and those needs are based on the demands that they're going into. So we a lot of the cool equipment that you'll see here, whether it's uh, you know, big equipment to measure the amount of uh, activity that we're doing or the equipment that we put on our athletes to measure what they're doing in their sport. All that data is used to get a sense of what are the, what the, what are the demands of the sport, right? Then uh, take those demands and we compare it to what's the athlete's physical readiness to handle those demands. If there's a gap there, that's their margin of risk. And the whole point of training is to try to mitigate that risk. If the athlete is more physically ready than the demands, then that we refer to that as a margin of safety. That's what we're trying to achieve. That way we know the athlete can handle whatever is thrown at them uh, and uh, they're able to uh, continue to progress and start to en really enhance their performance from year one uh, to year four or five. So one of our real points of difference uh, when you compare us against other universities, whether it's the Big West, Mountain West, uh, Pac-12, um, is how we develop athletes. We're more interested in how you produce power than, than the overall power you produce. So in order to understand how you produce power, we need some sexy tools to do that. And some of the tools that we have, whether it's force plates, uh, positions transducers, or GPS devices, uh, all of those are designed to uh, measure how you produce power and the power that is ultimately coming out of the efforts that you're putting into uh, the different activities we have you do. Then we take that information and um, use that to design your programs, identify weaknesses. We uh, go through a really relentless assessment process when you first start within your respective sport. Uh, we look at how you produce power, we look at your fitness, uh, how you um, uh, change direction, how you jump, how you land, uh, and then that tells us how much we can really uh, push you, right? Uh, it's, we feel that the building blocks, if we can focus on a really good foundation, a really good structure, then uh, when you're ready to go, you'll be ready for it. Otherwise, you're contributing more to the injuries or the mechanisms of injury as opposed to the mechanisms of performance, right? So we use our force plates. Those force plates measure the amount of force that you're putting into the ground. Uh, that applies to your ability when you're jumping, your elevation. Now, if the amount of force you're putting in the ground uh, is greater than what we feel you can handle based on the way you land, then that can tell us if you are um, maybe predisposed for an ankle, for a knee, or some type of other kind of injury, right? We have positions transducers, which are basically measure the velocity in which you do things, uh, so that we know that in sports, uh, how fast you can execute a movement differentiates you from being the best or not, or winning and losing, or getting uh, some space to score or not. The position transducers help us measure that movement capability and the speed at which you move and progressively work on ensuring that you're moving as fast as you need to move relevant to what the speeds in the sport are, right? So we can do that in a more progressive manner in this building uh, and then we can see how well it transfers out to the sport. 
Um, we have these little units that are often referred to as GPS units, but there's a lot more to them than that. They have an accelerometer in them, they have a magnometer, and they have a gyroscope. Essentially what that device is doing is it's measuring how fast you're running, uh, how hard the forces your body is experiencing when you change direction, how high you're jumping. Uh, it's measuring all of that, the, the pitch and rotation of your body as you're moving down the soccer field or down the court. That information then again comes back and we can see, all right, here's the output, is the system, in, in this case the athlete, uh, really built to be able to handle all of that output? The answer is yes, great, away you go. If the answer is no, then as I said, we fix that. So it, it, makes, it makes the programming that we're doing uh, for you much more specific, right? Uh, and enables us not to, to guess as much and, and not just train you um, to be a better basketball player or to train you to be a better soccer player or to be a better volleyball or a better swimmer or water polo or whatever it might be. It's really to train you to be a better athlete and then that will translate into your sport, right? Most programs will focus on the sport, but they don't focus on the individual who plays basketball, the individual who plays soccer, the individual who plays volleyball, the individual who plays water polo, or the individual who swims. They just focus on the demands of the sport. And that's where you see a lot of issues occur, uh, injuries that occur too early in careers, and just keep them out of uh, accelerating and uh, achieving their potential. So in order to achieve the things that we want to achieve, we've got to make sure that you're training at and close to what your perceived ceiling is. We need to ensure each training session is right within your capability and capacity. And so each session we're giving a feedback. So as you're lifting, it's not just the weight that's on the bar, uh, it's also how fast you're moving that bar or how hard you're pushing into the ground uh, that gives you the feedback that's contributing either to performance or potentially the mechanisms of injury. So it's a very biofeedback rich environment. Uh, we have screens in and around the facility, as you can see, that uh, enable us to give you that feedback so you can watch and see what you've done, what you've produced, how you looked. Um, and that's important because it's, there's no passengers on the way to a national championship. Um, we can't exceed your commitment level when it comes to developing your athleticism. We can match it, but we can't ever exceed it. So we need you to drive this as much as uh, we help you. Uh, and the only way we do that is if we're doing that together. So when you see your outputs and when you see how hard you're working, that helps drive your focus and your commitment uh, day in and day out.